Hello, my name is Paul Martin. I'm an R&D manager at Hewlett Packard in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I'll be giving the talk today um, a highly integrated workstation graphics system. Uh, I'm giving this talk uh, for Larry Thayer, who couldn't be here, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, this is a talk about a chip we designed at HP for a workstation graphics system. Uh, the chip is called Artist and is the companion to the Hummingbird CPU, which Steve Undy discusses on another videotape. Okay, we wanted our graphics system to perform well in three application areas. Uh, these are listed in priority order on the slide. Uh, the first is um, fast 2D graphical user interface. Uh, nearly every computer user has become accustomed to running some sort of GUI, whether it be uh, the X window system, Windows 3. whatever, or a presentation manager. And uh, we feel that these types of functions are probably the most important of these three on this page to accelerate in order to improve general user productivity. Number two is digital video decompression support. Uh, there are multiple potential sources of compressed digital video in the world today, possibly from LAN, WAN, uh, disk, or CD-ROM. And we want to decompress all of these uh, at very high frame rates and high visual quality without having to throw a boatload of special purpose hardware at the problem. Okay. And then finally, uh, efficient 3D graphics. Um, HP has a history of supporting 3D graphics uh, ever since about 1986, and we wanted to uh, make sure we did that efficiently on this uh, low-end platform. Okay, project strategy. Um, the idea was to um, look at the problem at a system level, not an isolated chip level, and hence the first strategy. Uh, cost performance optimization through the use of system level design, essentially being able to make CPU and uh, graphics trade-offs in terms of where we place the hardware. Okay. Number two is performance optimization by pushing the limits of available technology. Uh, rather than using lots of redundant hardware, we thought it would be good to uh, extract the most from, uh, from the low-cost hardware we had available to us. Um, and number three, cost optimization through the use of a high level of integration. Uh, in layman's terms, uh, let's put a lot of stuff on the chip, pack a lot onto the chip. Okay, uh, we'll see more detail on the next slide. Okay, this slide is a system block diagram. Okay, um, the large rectangle in the center of the slide is the artist chip itself. Okay, and as you can see, it connects in the upper left hand corner to the CPU via an I.O. bus. Uh, this is a 32-bit multiplexed address data bus. And I um, should note that while Artist was designed to perform very well with the Hummingbird CPU, um, it actually is, uh, would work quite well with any general purpose CPU on the market today. Okay. Um, okay, the Artist chip contains, in the upper left-hand corner, a GUI accelerator. And uh, right below that is the frame buffer controller, which interfaces to the VRAM array okay, via a 32-bit uh, data path. And then on the right-hand side is the video timing generation, cursor generation, and RAM DAC. Okay. Uh, by varying the amount of VRAM, uh, uh, multiple resolutions can be supported. So as you see below, one or two megabytes, that should read, of uh, VRAM is uh, supportable. Uh, all configurations are eight planes deep, and uh, there's an extra plane which is stripped off of uh, off-screen memory in order to do attribute selection for selecting one of the two color maps. Okay. And then finally, in the upper right-hand corner, RGB comes directly out of Artis and goes directly to the monitor. <coughs> okay, strategy number one, cost performance optimization criteria. Um, one advantage of designing both graphics and CPUs is that the optimum system level solution can be created. Okay. For example, uh, previous PA RISC uh, CPUs have included instructions to accelerate 3D graphics functions such as flip code comparisons and rasterization. Okay. The questions we ask ourselves uh, in making these trade-offs are the three below. Number one, can the function be performed more efficiently in the CPU? Essentially, where does it make sense to do the function? And here we have to fight the urge to try and throw too much hardware into the CPU. Um, we have to uh, follow the 80-20 rule wherever possible. Okay. Number two, is the CPU enhancement inexpensive? Um, we can't afford to burden the CPU with a lot of cost, uh, which is useful only for graphics. Uh, in the case of Hummingbird, it will be used in non-graphics applications in some cases, and uh, those people don't, don't want to pay for additional hardware they're not using. Okay. And number three, uh, is there a significant performance advantage to putting uh, these things in hardware in the CPU? Uh, we'd like to get more than 5 or 10% improvement. Uh, 20, 30, 40% would be a lot better, or several X would be even better yet. 
<coughs> any change not only affects hardware in terms of design time and cost, but also has software implications in terms of uh, compiler enhancements and or driver changes. So there's a ripple effect to any kind of a change you make in hardware. Okay. So the first application area we applied these criteria to uh, was GUI. Okay, and this is what we came up with. Okay. Uh, what we decided to put in the CPU uh, were a couple of pretty simple things, but quite effective things. Uh, number one uh, was fast memory uh, to graphics path, basically a block copy uh, to I.O. space. Uh, what this allows you to do is uh, animate in images very quickly, and it also allows you to restore occluded rasters and other window system kinds of things very quickly. Uh, the second was a fast register to graphics path, which is um, pipeline to I.O. store, and this allows you to uh, do fast command and data transfer at greater than 80 megabytes a second. And for example, if you're creating a vector command uh, which would go into an artist register, uh, this doesn't have to be stored as system memory and then copied back into artist. It can be transferred at very high speed directly into the, uh, to the register in artist. Okay, what we decided to put in artist itself uh, were some of the standard GUI kinds of things, um, such as uh, vector acceleration, rectangle acceleration, frame buffer bit blitz, uh, text, fast text support, cursor hardware, as well as uh, bit per pixel uh, frame buffer access mode, uh, VRAM block write support, Boolean raster operations of the normal varieties and or XOR, et cetera, and two color lookup tables. Uh, the idea behind the two color lookup tables was to reduce palette conflict between the window system and applications. Okay, so these uh, graphics specific functions benefit performance and allow parallelism uh, between the CPU and the graphics subsystem. For example, while the uh, graphics subsystem is rendering a vector, the CPU can be recalculating the endpoints or calculating the endpoints for the next vector to be uh, generated and uh, getting ready to send those down. Okay. The next application area was digital video decompression. Uh, this was a new area for us and required some investigation. Uh, there are many algorithms for decompression and therefore we didn't feel comfortable committing any single algorithm to silicon. Okay. We did, however, notice some common traits in the various algorithms. Uh, there are some common image processing functions which uh, occur, and most all of the algorithms use some kind of a color space compression at the very end of the pipeline. Okay. So uh, what we got here uh, for the CPU uh, was some special image processing instructions, uh, which Steve Undy describes in the associated videotape. And also the fast register to graphics path is, again, useful for transferring pixels to the screen at a very high rate. Uh, after doing all the decompression in the CPU, we didn't want such a simple thing as transferring the image to be a bottleneck. Okay, what we did in Artist <coughs> were uh, two things. One was color space conversion hardware. Okay, this is the last step in the image decompression pipeline, and you can gain a large percentage in the frame rate by incorporating this feature. Uh, this is relatively simple to do in hardware, a single pipe stage, um, but in software, it's actually a complicated operation. And uh, so we got a, a large payback for this one. Uh, the next was color compression. Um, this is a new algorithm we developed at HP. It's proprietary and uh, patent applied for. And uh, it allows an image which is visually equivalent to a 24-bit image to be displayed using only a low-cost 8-bit frame buffer. And um, not only does this have the obvious cost implications, but it allows uh, ease of configurability. Uh, many of the graphics sub systems on the market today allow you to trade off color space resolution for screen resolution. Uh, with this feature on Artist, uh, we don't have to make this trade off. All configurations can be eight planes and all look very high uh, visual quality. Okay. <coughs> okay, here's the image decompression pipeline. Uh, basically, the compressed image uh, comes in from whatever media, uh, is decompressed by the CPU, uh, and, the color, and the YUV color space information is sent down to the artist chip. Uh, their color space conversion happens, and uh, out the right side of that pops a 24-bit RGB image. Okay. That's color compressed down to 8 bits and stored in the frame buffer. Uh, after that, uh, color decompression occurs, and the uh, very close approximation of the original 24-bit image is generated and sent to the screen. Okay, now I'm going to show you um, some examples of this uh, technology. And uh, hopefully you can see this clearly on the videotape. Uh, we may want to zoom in uh, on the top, the middle, and the bottom in sequence. Uh, the images on the left are full screen images. Okay, the images on the right are uh, zooms of those images, uh, what they would look like to a user at normal viewing distance. Okay, the image on the top 
um, is actually a 24-bit image, and uh, it uh, obviously is very high visual quality. Okay, it requires 24 bits, though. Okay, the image in the middle is an 8-bit image, and uh, this is displayed using a technique which most workstation manufacturers and many PC manufacturers use today, and it's called ordered dithering. And as you'll note, uh, there's a lot of stippling to the image and uh, some graininess to the image. And while the color space is, is quite good, um, there are some annoying artifacts in the image. Now, the image on the bottom is uh, an image processed using this color compression decompression technique. And uh, if we can zoom down to the bottom there, uh, you'll note that the image on the bottom has very high visual quality, uh, pretty much visually indistinguishable from the image at the top. And um, that is the uh, benefit of uh, color compression decompression. Okay? I'll show you another slide here, which uh, gives you another example. Okay? Here we have three images. Um, this is the X29 public domain database. Uh, the image at the top is a regular palletized version of that with 256 colors. The image in the middle, again, is an ordered dithered image, and uh, you can probably see some uh, stippling on the tail, for example. And then the image on the bottom is the color compressed, decompressed image, and you can see that the, uh, the image is extremely smooth and looks like a 24 bit image. Okay? Okay. 3D graphics features. Uh, again, this was not a primary focus uh, for our workstation design, but uh, we do like to support 3D across the product line, and we wanted to make sure we could do that efficiently on this system as well. Okay, so what we placed in the CPU in this situation uh, were uh, transformations and clipping for both polygons and vectors. Okay, and there actually are some instruction set enhancements to uh, speed up these operations. In addition for polygons, uh, the normal lighting, C buffering, pixel color interpolation operations are performed in the CPU. Okay. In the graphics chip, Artist, um, we have some vector rasterizer hardware which can be used to scan convert vectors. And also the color compression we just saw uh, can be used to generate very high quality 3D images. Okay, our second strategy uh, was to maximize performance or to extract the maximum performance from existing low cost technology. Okay, um, an example of that is uh, we were able to cycle the VRAMs in the frame buffer uh, using fast hyperpage mode at 37.5 nanoseconds, uh, very fast. And um, another uh, way we do this is by utilizing the advanced VRAM features. Uh, these include utilizing the plane mask, uh, the extended data out, which helps give us that fast hyperpage mode number, and uh, also the block write capability of the VRAMs. Uh, the block write capability allows us to get a net constant color pixel block write speed of uh, almost 850 million pixels a second, which is quite fast. Okay, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, the next slide will actually give you some more detail on performance of the chip. Uh, these are hardware limits, and um, up the top, uh, we large rectangle area fill would be 850 million pixels a second. Uh, we're able to do over 2 million 10 pixel randomly oriented vectors per second. Okay. In addition, uh, we can do 1.7 million 10 by 10 rectangles per second. And in terms of text, around a million characters a second. And for frame buffer blitz, uh, and these are unaligned blitz, not necessarily vertically aligned, uh, we can do about 47 million pixels per second. So it's quite fast. Oh, another number I should mention, um, 3D vectors per second. Uh, when we combine this chip with uh, Hummingbird CPU, uh, we've measured in excess of 1 million 3D vectors per second. Okay, the third strategy is high levels of integration. Okay, um, the idea here is to make effective use of the high levels of integration which are available in the industry today. And um, number one would be uh, we have a built-in DAC which connects directly to a monitor. Um, uh, this DAC and the associated uh, lookup tables uh, would probably replace an external RAM DAC which would cost in the tens of dollars kind of range. Um, in the open market, so that's quite a big cost savings for us. Uh, number two would be we have a built-in programmable phase lock loop. That eliminates a crystal and or an external uh, phase lock loop chip, and that saves us a few more dollars as well. Uh, by the way, this phase lock, uh, lock loop allows us to change resolutions on the fly and uh, gives us M over N kind of resolution uh, in terms of the frequencies we can generate. Okay, And then we also have a JTAG port, which allows us um, uh, to test the chip and also multiple internal signal 
uh, generators. Okay. This makes die, package part, and system tests a lot simpler and faster, and hence less expensive. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, the chip uh, is a mixture of custom and standard cell design. Uh, the custom design was employed in regular structures where there was a big potential size advantage, such as the data path, or in areas that had special needs, such as the RAM, DAC, or PLL. Okay. Everything else was standard cell. <coughs> And one final comment, uh, having the entire controller on chip uh, allows uh, wide data paths, which uh, would be impractical in multi-chip implementations, but result in improved performance. Okay. So let's get to some artist facts. These are the kinds of things we like to see at hot chips. Um, the number of transistors, roughly half a million. Um, that's equivalent to about a third of a million gates, or about 100K if you eliminate uh, the RAM, which includes the lookup table RAM mostly. Uh, the die size is 9.7 by 12.1, and the package is kind of interesting. Interesting. Uh, we can either use a 208 pin metal quad or use a 240 metal quad, and if we do that, we actually get uh, digital flat panel support directly out of the chip. So we can hook it up to one of a variety of uh, commonly available flat panels uh, on the market today. Uh, there are three metal layers. Um, the L effective is as shown, 0.61 for NFETs, 0.66 for PFETs. And the frequency of operation uh, can be between 40 and 80 megahertz for the front end, and between 25 and 135 megahertz for the video back end. 25 corresponds roughly to uh, VGA timing, and 135 corresponds to 1280 by 1024 at 72 hertz. Okay. Power dissipation is worst case 3.5 watts, but we're measuring more typically uh, in the mid to low 2 watt range. Okay, uh, let's take a look at a block diagram. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, uh, the I.O. bus comes in. Again, that's a 32-bit multiplex address data bus. Uh, it goes through the bus interface to the input FIFO, which is used to smooth out performance, essentially. Uh, next, we uh, hit a GUI accelerator, which does the vectors, rectangles, text splits, so forth. Below that, we have state registers, which store the state of the chip, uh, which is roughly uh, between 100 and 150 bits. And uh, there we go into the color space converter, uh, pixel formatter and, and tile builder, and read ahead FIFO. <coughs> now what the read ahead FIFO does is uh, four reads, if you're reading back data from the frame buffer to the CPU, um, it buffers up reads to make them more efficient, essentially. Uh, also, it is used when doing block moves to coalesce pixels uh, in the same area of the screen uh, to improve efficiency. On the right-hand side of the diagram, we have uh, the DAX at the top, okay? We have the lookup table RAM below that, uh, color decompression, uh, video RAM control and video timing, uh, and then on the right-hand side, pixel I.O. data path, uh, the PLL is right there. The test circuitry off to the right, you can see that's a small percentage of the chip. Uh, the LUT uh, select and cursor control, and then some additional decompression and cursor hardware. Finally, the VRAM serial port is down at the uh, bottom of the chip there on the right. Okay. Now, I'll show you a die photograph now, and uh, you can probably identify the areas I just described on this, uh, this die photograph. Okay, you can let's get a look at that. Okay. And finally, in summary, I'd like to say, uh, by using a system-level design approach uh, and high levels of integration, a powerful yet inexpensive workstation and graphics system has been built. This system accelerates 2D GUI functions, digital image decompression, and 3D graphics. Uh, I'd like to thank the entire team, um, the entire artist team, who designed the chip, including folks in STD in Fort Collins, Colorado. And equally important are the, our good friends in HP's IC division, uh, who put a lot of intellectual property and, and effort and so forth into the chip. And finally, the software driver writers that uh, wrote the, uh, the software to go along with the chip. Um, at this point, I'd like to um, show a practical implementation of a hot chip. Um, what I have here is a, a little uh, video card, uh, and you'll notice the artist chip is, is right there on the card. It's a 208M quad in this case. Um, and uh, the only other major parts on the, uh, on the card are these video ramps here. There are eight of them, and this particular little card allows a, um, a 1280 by 1024 display and uh, at very high performance. Okay, so you can take a look at that. Uh, there's a few other chips, uh, some capacitors, uh, current reference, but that's about it. So thank you very much.